One of the best ways to learn is by doing, just getting your hands dirty and making mistakes. And while that's partly true for building a no-code app for the first time, chances are you actually need to build the app correctly the first time around so you can actually release it to users. Plus, you're probably trying to keep that development time frame as short as possible so you can bring those users on board ASAP. Because of that, while you'll always learn best through practice, there are certain development mistakes you want to avoid altogether if you want to build quickly and correctly. In this video, we're walking through the 10 most important, starting with overcomplicating the design. Beginners often get ahead of themselves when it comes to designing the front end interfaces of their application. They're excited about creating that wow factor before even creating a functional application. When in reality, it's better to start simple and iterate from there. A clean, straightforward design is often more effective and easier to manage. It doesn't matter how pretty your app is if it can't actually do anything. So make sure you're designing for function first. For example, we've seen many creative ways to present a menu or navigation in an app, everything from animated transitions to full page takeovers. Building these features take time, and they're taking more time than they really need when you're just getting started. A menu doesn't have to be flashy, it just has to help the user navigate the app. In fact, in the Bubble platform, there's a free plugin you can use to get a traditional and subtle slide bar menu up and running in just a few moments. Same thing goes for your colors and element styling. Don't overwork this because it takes time to put together a sophisticated visual theme for an app. Start simple and iterate from there. We're huge advocates for prioritizing a functioning app first. Focus on creating styles for your most common elements like groups, buttons, and texts first, and then move on from there. Design also speaks to the way you've created your page layouts and have organized elements. If you're brand new to this space, then focus on building a multi-page app instead of a single page app. Multi-page is generally easier to work with since there are less elements to manage in one place. Take this concept and apply it to all of your designs early in your development. The next mistake is neglecting responsive design. This speaks to how accessible your page designs are on different screen sizes. The Bubble platform offers a lot of different responsive settings that you can work with, but if not used correctly, your app may not look or function well on different devices. So make sure you're testing and adjusting for mobile, tablet, and desktop views. Don't underestimate the impact a responsive design has on user retention. If your app just isn't usable on different types of devices, you could be leaving out a large part of your market. There are plenty of tools out there to help you test responsiveness, such as your own browser, the Bubble Responsive Viewer, and even browser plugins that help you compare designs side by side. Of course, nothing beats testing your designs on actual devices, so if you're able to pull out a phone, tablet, and computer, then you'll be able to get the best perspectives. Keep in mind that your designs don't necessarily have to be 100% universal across all screen sizes. You may need to make decisions on showing or hiding parts of your design based on how much space is available. For example, menus are a common feature that present differently in mobile versus desktop views to make better use of the screen space. In fact, many things on mobile tend to be stripped down, simplified, or hidden until needed so as to not overcrowd that more limited space. The next mistake is ignoring performance optimizations. And this is something that's easy to overlook as a beginner, but it is absolutely something you need to be mindful of when you're just getting started with your app and all throughout your development. Because as your app grows, you'll likely experience heavier loads, maybe more users or just heavier activity going on in your app on a more frequent basis. And the last thing that you want to happen is that your app hits a wall, right? Things start to break, or maybe features start to slow down for users and they're experience starts to decline. So what you want to do instead is put in preventative measures so that your app can actually scale smoothly as opposed to putting out fires. The best way to guide yourself through optimization is to think about things in terms of complexity, volume, and repetition. This is a framework Bubble encourages its users to follow. Complexity can mean advanced search filters, a variety of conditional scenarios that all need to work together, multi-step sequences, each with their own searches and calculations. The more complex, the more likely you're using more workload. So these are areas where you want to pay close attention and make sure you're not overdoing it. If you can simplify and still get the same outcomes, you should do that. Volume can mean things like the number of executed activities or the amount of data involved. A high volume of simple activities can still lead to more workload simply because you're executing those activities a lot. 
So you want to watch out for excessive volume. For example, if you can filter down a search more on the server side, you can reduce the amount of data that's sent to the browser, which can overall help with performance. Repetition can happen when you execute activities at a high frequency or have duplicative activity. For example, setting up a workflow to check for a change in the database every five seconds. This is high repetition, which can in turn lead to high workload depending on what's going on within those actions. Think about executing things only when you need it rather than constantly having to run them in the background in case you need it. Also, be careful with element designs that may duplicate logic excessively, such as a repeating group connected to a table of thousands of items and is designed without a display limit. Hey, real quick, if you're finding this useful so far and you really do want to build your app as quickly and as correctly as possible the first time around, we have hundreds of other founders doing exactly that with our Fast Track course. Fast Track is designed to take you from idea to app by following a specific four phase process that will leave you with a scalable application and a new skill set. So I have the link on the screen right now, and I'm also going to include it in the description below so you can check it out if you're interested. All right, back to the video. The next mistake you want to avoid is an inadequate database structure. Poorly designed databases can lead to performance issues and difficulty scaling. And this is because so much of how your app works is dictated by the database. So you wanna pay attention to how you organize your tables, how records relate to one another. It makes a huge difference in how smoothly your app runs. Here are the areas you should pay attention to. Data types. These are your tables and are the first level of database organization. Make sure you're separating your data into enough tables to keep things easy to manage. A good rule of thumb is to think about all the important nouns in your app. For example, if you're building a marketplace, some important nouns would include listing, transaction, message, maybe even booking, offer, and photo. Next, each data type will contain a few properties, which you'll organize with fields. It's important you structure these with the appropriate format so you can use them properly in your app. For example, a number field that will help you create calculations. Next, take advantage of Bubble's option sets. This is a database adjacent feature that lets you manage predetermined lists of choices. I highly recommend you use this wherever you can as it'll save you a lot of effort and help you keep the app more optimized. Finally, don't forget about relationships. When you set up your data types fields, you'll be able to link records to one another with them, which is a powerful capability to help you keep search expressions more efficient. The next mistake you want to avoid is an over-reliance on plugins. While plugins can definitely add powerful features, over-relying on them can make your app more complex and harder to maintain. Sometimes it's better to take the time to use built-in bubble functionalities whenever possible. So remember that a plugin is a dependency in your app, and every plugin you install is going to depend on outside services code and maintenance. The more of these you have in your app, the more vigilant you have to be about feature reliability. This isn't to say that plugins are bad in general, but you don't want to install plugins just to create a shortcut. They should help you solve a problem in your app. So if you can create a feature yourself from scratch, even if it takes more time, that time is likely going to be a better investment in the longevity of the feature. Not to mention, many plugins add code to your app, which could create conflicts or weigh things down at scale. The next mistake that you might be making with your Bubble app is skipping your testing. And I'm talking about stress testing here. You know, the last thing you want is for your users to find issues in the application before you do. So you wanna make sure that you're really thoroughly testing every aspect of your app before you release it to the outside world. Here are the general testing categories you wanna make sure you cover. First, testing different user scenarios. If your app is one where there are user roles and permissions, even something as simple as a logged in user versus a logged out, make sure you're testing the full app from the perspective of those roles. This is gonna help you confirm things like page access, personalized messaging, requirements these roles need to meet, and more. Next, make sure you're testing on different devices and browsers. We mentioned this a little earlier, but I can't stress enough how important it is to test outside of your home device. You may not even realize that an entire popular browser is getting a different experience or an entire breakpoint in page size is unable to consume your content. The only way to find out is to test. And finally, make sure you're testing your core user stories from start to finish. I encourage you to do this often, even as you're building the feature. Start from the beginning of the flow every time because it's really easy to create a ripple effect of changes with even the slightest edit to your logic. Yes, it's tedious, but you'll end up having to fix the issues anyway, and better to do it now in a controlled environment instead of a high-stress emergency situation. The next mistake you might be making is lacking user feedback. 
You know, building an app in isolation without gathering any feedback from users whatsoever could result in building a product that never meets user needs. So you want to involve potential users early on so that you can gather the feedback you need to make strategic and valuable improvements as you go. If possible, reach out to people in your personal network that would benefit from this app. Have real conversations with them and make sure you're addressing true pain points. You want to prioritize any feedback that supports relieving those pain points versus adding fluff functionality. This is an area in which you need to stay disciplined as well because you don't need to jump when they say jump. Stick to your core goals, but make sure you're getting the validation you need from a relevant test group to confirm you're moving in the right direction. The next mistake you might be making is underestimating the learning curve. You know, just because Bubble is no code does not mean that there's no work involved. There are a lot of different ways in Bubble to accomplish features, a lot of unique ways and creative ways. But if you're trying to build an application that is complex without really understanding how the platform works, then that could lead to a lot of mistakes and frustrations. Invest time in learning the platform and using its resources. Start by getting to know the interface and exploring the different tools available to you. In fact, I encourage you to try and build a common but simple feature on a blank page just to get a feel for all the components required to bring something to life, such as a signup form. A feature like that will touch on all the important areas, data structure to organize the details you want to save to the new user record, design to build the front end visuals for the signup form, and workflows to trigger the record creation and perhaps showing a success message on the screen. Beyond this, make sure you understand how Bubble handles data, how to work with dynamic expressions, and staying organized in the editor. As you continue to expose yourself to different use cases, you'll find quite quickly that there's usually more than one way to accomplish something. So make it a habit to understand which approach is actually going to serve your app the best. Keep realistic expectations here too. You're not going to learn it all in one day. No one does. But go into this knowing that there is learning to do, so that you don't burn out, and rather, stay motivated to stick with it. The next common mistake is not planning for scalability. So if you expect your app to grow, you need to make sure that your features and your designs from the start are going to be able to adapt to that growth and that you'll be able to maintain this growth behind the scenes. The last thing you want to do is have to go back and rework all of your features just to support heavier usage and more activity in your app. We talked about making sure your app is optimized from the start, and we'll mention it again here because optimization is a big factor in long-term scalability. Keep in mind that this is something you'll need to monitor at all times. You can't just set it and forget it. So use Bubble's app metrics screen to review your workload consumption. You may see opportunities for optimization, and these may evolve over time as usage and features evolve as well. Another area to consider for scalability is how manual certain functions are. You may want to design a more automated approach to allow the function to run on its own without manual intervention. For example, in a marketplace, if a listing expires, you can set up a backend workflow to automatically change its status and any other details to pull it off the marketplace, rather than waiting for the seller to manually click a button. Small features like this may not be a big deal in the short term, but at scale with higher volumes of data, you may benefit from creating logic that works for you rather than you working for it. Another thing to keep in mind is to lean on dynamic data and dynamic structures. For example, instead of designing three separate image elements to display a limited gallery for a listing, use a repeating group so you can display as many as the seller has uploaded. Now you don't have to anticipate the number. You can set a limit if you want, but thinking in terms of dynamic structures keeps features like this more scalable. And the last mistake we're going to talk about here is ignoring security best practices. This is a big one. It's really important no matter what type of application you're building. You want to make sure that you're implementing good, strong security measures to protect your user's data and prevent any unauthorized access. There are many capabilities to take advantage of here to make sure everything is protected. The first are privacy rules. This section of your editor is where you create custom rules around who can access what data and to what extent. These rules are global and server side, so they're really your first line of defense in making sure only the right users can access specific data. Without privacy rules, you leave sensitive data vulnerable to unauthorized access. We've seen this too many times in live applications that have no privacy rules whatsoever, and that can be dangerous. The next area to protect is the app editor itself. Pay attention to all the settings around who is allowed to access your app's page designs and workflows, the database and logs. This includes any collaborators you've invited and yes, even Bubble employees access to your application's data. 
Next, pay attention to options around user passwords, file privacy, cookies, and APIs. I encourage you to take the time to go through all of the security settings in your editor and configure them to fit your needs. You may need to address some of these as you go, but don't launch your app without taking care of these first. Finally, as with everything in Bubble, you have a lot of flexibility to create custom logic around how users access your app. Don't forget that you can create restrictions using workflows and conditions that reference your custom data structure and any other dynamic data sources you make available in your designs. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, the content you're about to see on the next screen will help you take things even further.